Fox hosts love to complain about other media outlets, especially ones that, unlike Fox, report news. So what's Fox's latest complaint? Bombshell court filing from late on Friday alleging the Clinton campaign paid a tech company to infiltrate servers at both Trump Tower and the White House. You would not know it from watching the news, though. Just about but Jeff Bezos doesn't think you should worry about it or even know that it happened. It's a media blackout. They're not reporting it. America needs to know. This needs to be exposed. It is a huge story. There's crickets in the media. Why? Why isn't the media covering this story? Fox hosts often pose that question. But here's my question. What exactly do they mean by this story? Because Jeff Bezos is Washington Post and the New York Times. And yes, this show just last night led with reporting on the so called bombshell filing from special counsel John Durham that says a tech firm with ties to a 2016 Clinton campaign lawyer named Michael Sussman monitored internet traffic between Trump Tower and the White House, among other places, and shared that data with Sussman. It says the firm monitored traffic but did not read or compromise any communications. The filing doesn't say which White House administration had its traffic monitored, but a separate filing from attorneys for Sussman said the tracking happened only while Barack Obama was president. So yes, in fact, the mainstream media has covered this story based on the available facts. But that's not the story Fox is telling. As ever, it seems to be writing its own. Here's 7 p.m. last night, Fox. Durham's documents show that Hillary Clinton hired people who hacked into Trump's home and office computers before and during his presidency and planted evidence that he colluded with Russia. Where to begin? This filing does not say that Hillary Clinton hired that tech firm or paid its leaders, Rodney Joffe, for the monitoring. It doesn't mention home or office computers and doesn't say that any hacking took place or that evidence was planted. Multiple false statements, and that's just Fox's first hour of prime time yesterday. Let's go on, 8 p.m. The filing says that Joffe and his computer scientists intercepted internet traffic, that is, emails and presumably text messages. This isn't a conspiracy theory. His claims were true. Democrats were spying on Donald Trump, not just as a candidate, but as president of the United States in the White House, as well as in his own home. Again. No evidence in the filing that Trump was spied on through hacking or other means. The filing doesn't say he was in the White House at the time of the monitoring. Also, where does it say anything about text messages or emails? It doesn't. But 9 p.m. The Clinton campaign paid a tech firm to infiltrate the servers at Trump Tower and then later infiltrate the servers at the Trump White House. And make no mistake, this is far worse than Watergate. Nope. Infiltrate does not appear in this filing anywhere. OK, 10 p.m. A bombshell new court filing from special counsel John Durham alleges that the Clinton campaign paid a tech company to surreptitiously monitor computer servers at Trump Tower and even in the executive office of the president. Again, no. The filing does not say that. It does not say the Clinton campaign paid the tech firm. So think about this. If this Durham filing is such a bombshell as Fox says it is, then why do they keep ignoring what's actually in it? Why do they keep sexing it up? And then they keep asking, why is no one covering the story of the filing? Well, plenty of outlets are. The one that actually isn't is Fox. Charlie Savage of The New York Times is one of the reporters covering this story. His piece from Monday is titled Court Filing Started a Furor in Right-Wing Outlets, but their narrative is off track. Uh, Charlie, thanks for coming on the show tonight. You write that much of the right-wing narrative is factually incorrect, but you also write that many parts of the narrative are old news. Explain that for us. Uh, well, the old news part was the basic thrust of this, that Michael Sussman, this lawyer, is being prosecuted by Durham for making a false statement, allegedly. Uh, in a meeting, uh, had met with the CIA in February of 2017 to convey concerns raised by cybersecurity specialists about certain internet-related data showing that, or suggesting that a very rare in the United States Russian-made smartphone had been connecting to networks inside Trump Tower, inside another building connected to Trump, inside some other places, and inside the White House. We had at the New York Times reported that in a story about the uh, related to the Durham investigation in the Michael Sussman case back in October. And so when this filing came out last night, uh, I'm sorry, on, on Friday night, the first read of it is, oh, this information is information that is already out in the wild. It's not some breaking new revelation. 
the way the right wing media treated the entire line of inquiry. But then, of course, as you have just ably uh, demonstrated, they began gilding the lily in ways that got more and more hysterical. So Fox hosts have invoked Watergate. Donald Trump has suggested evidence of a crime. Is there any sign that Sussman or anyone from the tech firm could face charges stemming from this internet traffic monitoring? It's very unlikely for one thing. Uh, well, this isn't really monitoring traffic. That's part of, there's, it's a very really technical thing, and I don't think anyone at Fox actually understands the technology at all, which may be a contributing factor here. Uh, but the meeting that this all happened at, uh, this February 2017 meeting, uh, is was just outside of five years old at the time that Durham made this filing. And the statute of limitations for charging something related to that meeting uh, therefore had passed. And therefore, Durham had waited until there was no chance that charges could be brought before he uh, discussed this in the first instance, uh, but doing so in a way that led the uh, the sort of entire right-wing ecosystem and to start running with narratives like uh, spying on the Trump White House when the data in question, according to the people who developed this analysis, involved malware in the Obama White House. They had been asked to look at so after Russia had on that note, the White House in 2015. On that note, Charlie, you mentioned the Obama White House. You've reported that Sussman looked at this internet traffic data, shared it with the CIA in 2017 to suggest possible links between Trump and Russia. But maybe I'm being, maybe I'm confused by all the technical stuff. If the White House internet monitoring happened only during the Obama years, what evidence would that offer about Trump? Well, we have uh, we have Durham's portrayal of this, that they said this entire thing was about Trump. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I think these researchers had found, as they were looking at evidence for mush, Russian uh, malware and malicious activity, targeting American government institutions, targeting people associated with the election, they had uncovered this pattern of Yota phone data. That's the Russian-made smartphone that doesn't really exist in the United States, isn't sold here, is rarely seen here, that th those devices appear to have been connecting to various networks of concern, which included Trump Tower in 2016. But they had also seen evidence of that data in the White House network, the Obama White but House it, network. And that is an Obama. important thing, whether or not that part is connected to Trump. That, I mean, that suggests someone with a weird Russian phone in his pocket is in the White House. That means seems yes. worthy of discussion. And I think that that it's not the, it's uh, not quite the same thing as Sean Hannity health. saying they. It's not quite the same thing as Sean Hannity saying they spied on our president while he was in the Oval Office. Uh, there's no evidence of that in this filing. Sussman was charged last fall for lying in a 2016 FBI meeting about his ties to the Clinton campaign. While this Durham filing does not suggest spying or infiltration by Sussman or the Clinton campaign, is there any evidence that Sussman was trying to create the appearance of wrongdoing by Trump and get the feds to investigate? People are talking about Trump being framed. Well, I mean, it's a little more complicated than that in that Sussman was the lawyer for a technology executive named Rodney Jaffe, who had been working with these cybersecurity uh, researchers. And the cybersecurity researchers had developed these anomalous data they had concerns about and had a theory about and had written up white papers saying, this is odd. What, what could this mean? Is there a sign of a, a Trump tie here or not? And eventually, that paper makes it into Rodney Jaffe's hands, and then it makes it into Michael Sussman's hands, and Sussman takes it to the CIA. But it was not Sussman himself who had developed this theory in the first instance. He is not a cybersecurity engineering expert. He's a lawyer, although he does specialize in cyber issues. So he was not the one who was examining the data or analyzing it and drawing conclusions about it. He was conveying concerns that other people had developed. Charlie, last quick question. You write about how it's covered in right-wing media. You talk about these narratives being based often on a misleading presentation of the facts. They tend to involve dense and obscure issues. Dissecting them requires asking readers to expend significant mental energy and time. What is the solution to that? It's a total dilemma. You're checkmated if you do or don't. So one question is, well, we have uh, control over our own news pages. You have control over your own show. You make decisions about what's it's important for your readers or your viewers to spend their limited time absorbing that day. And so one question, well, we, this doesn't merit coverage. It's just a bunch of garbage. Uh, it's more hot air. Uh, and it would take a lot of time that they could spend reading about something that's real to ask them to ex understand this and work through it when the payoff is, therefore, nothing to see here. But if you don't cover it, if you just say, meh, 
then the yeah. whole sort of Trump world ecosystem says, oh, the media is engaged in a cover up. See, the media is part yes. of a conspiracy. And you're, there's no win, basically. There is no win. There is no win, but all we can do is keep doing what we're doing. Charlie Savage, thank you for your reporting. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.